Flying in Alaska is tough. Remote airstrips, fast-changing weather, and extreme cold make every flight a challenge. When a plane goes down, finding answers takes time. That's the case with this Bering Air Cessna Caravan 208EX, which crashed into Norton Sound. Now that the wreckage has been found, investigators have a crucial piece of the puzzle. They're analyzing flight data, weather reports, and the aircraft itself to determine what went wrong. With new evidence in hand, let's see what we've got. The Cessna Caravan, registered as November 321 Bravo Alpha, was on a routine scheduled flight from Unalakleet to Nome, Alaska, operated by Bering Air under Part 135 regulations. Bering Air has been a trusted carrier in Alaska since the 1970s, specializing in transporting passengers and cargo across some of the most challenging terrain in North America. The route from Unalakleet to Nome is a relatively short 148-mile journey, typically covered in about an hour, depending on weather conditions and air traffic. The Caravan 208EX, an upgraded model of the well-known Cessna Caravan series, is favored for operations in remote areas due to its rugged design, powerful PT6A140 engine, and advanced Garmin G1000 avionics. The aircraft, configured for a single pilot operation, carried one pilot and nine passengers on this flight. According to ADSB flight tracking data, the aircraft initially climbed to a cruising altitude of 8,100 feet and maintained a steady ground speed of approximately 180 miles per hour. The descent into Nome began smoothly, with a stable descent rate between 400 and 600 feet per minute. However, as the aircraft neared 3,400 feet, the descent rate increased to 800 feet per minute, and the final recorded ground speed dropped to 115 miles per hour. The last known ADSB data point placed the aircraft approximately 38 miles east of Nome, but other reports suggested it may have been within just 12 miles of its destination. Shortly before contact was lost, the pilot informed Anchorage Air Traffic Control that he would be entering a holding pattern due to the runway at Nome being temporarily unavailable. Holding patterns are common in aviation, allowing aircraft to circle in a designated airspace until clearance is given for landing. Nome Airport is a critical hub for regional flights with limited infrastructure and a single paved runway, runway 1028, which is 5,576 feet long. Given Nome's role as a logistical center for Western Alaska, air traffic controllers must carefully coordinate arrivals and departures, particularly in winter conditions when weather can change rapidly. At the time of the aircraft's disappearance, weather conditions in Nome were challenging but not unusual for Alaska. Reports from the airport indicated light snowfall, reduced visibility, and a surface temperature of 14 degree Fahrenheit. Pilots operating in this region are accustomed to flying in extreme cold and winter weather, but icing is always a concern, especially for aircraft that remain at lower altitudes for prolonged periods. The region's remoteness means that even minor deviations in flight paths or delays in search and rescue efforts can significantly impact survival chances in an emergency. Search efforts began immediately after the aircraft was reported missing, but poor visibility and deteriorating weather conditions made aerial reconnaissance difficult. The U.S. Coast Guard launched a C-130 Hercules from its base in Kodiak, nearly 500 miles away, while the Alaska Air National Guard deployed another C-130 from Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson in Anchorage. The C-130 is a highly capable search and rescue aircraft with advanced radar and thermal imaging technology, but the vast and rugged Alaskan terrain, combined with worsening weather, significantly hampered the search. Local air and ground searches also faced challenges due to the low cloud ceiling and limited visibility. After days of intense search efforts, the wreckage of the aircraft was found in Norton Sound, along with the bodies of all ten victims. The discovery confirms the devastating outcome that many had feared and brings closure to the families of those on board. With the wreckage now recovered, investigators will have critical physical evidence to examine, including the aircraft's airframe, engines, and flight controls, which will help determine what led to the crash. The loss of a scheduled airline flight in Alaska is always a serious event, given the state's heavy reliance on aviation for transportation, commerce, and medical evacuations. Nome, 
a city of just under 4,000 residents, serves as a vital hub for surrounding villages, many of which have no road access. Aircraft like the Cessna Caravan provide lifelines for remote communities, carrying passengers, medical supplies, groceries, and mail. The discovery of the wreckage marks a major turning point in the investigation as authorities work to piece together what happened in the final moments of the flight. What we should know first here is that flying in Alaska is unlike flying anywhere else in the United States. With over 663,000 square miles of rugged terrain, fewer than 15,000 miles of paved roads, and more than 80% of its communities accessible only by air, aviation is not just a convenience, it's a necessity. Pilots flying in Alaska must navigate some of the most unpredictable weather conditions on the planet, often with limited infrastructure and in remote areas where emergency services are hours away. Single pilot operations add an extra layer of complexity as pilots must not only fly the aircraft but also load and unload passengers and cargo, conduct safety checks, and handle any unexpected mechanical issues, often in temperatures well below freezing. In winter, pilots frequently take off and land on icy runways, battle strong crosswinds, and operate in near zero visibility due to fog or snow squalls. The aviation community in Alaska is incredibly tight knit. With over 8,000 registered pilots and a reliance on small, regional carriers, nearly everyone in the industry knows each other. Bering Air has built a reputation as one of Alaska's most respected Part 135 and 121 carriers, known for its commitment to safety and reliability. This crash is particularly significant because it represents Bering Air's first hull loss in its decades-long history. A hull loss, meaning an aircraft is damaged beyond repair, is a rare occurrence for an airline with such a long operational record. The accident also marks the first known loss of a Cessna 208EX equipped with the TKS anti-icing system, an advanced technology designed to prevent ice buildup on the aircraft's wings and control surfaces. Nome Airport has radar capability, but it is limited in range and altitude. Radar systems in Alaska often struggle to detect aircraft flying at lower altitudes, especially over water or ice-covered terrain. Given that much of Nome's surrounding area is flat tundra or the Bering Sea, radar coverage may not extend all the way to the surface. This can make it difficult to pinpoint the exact location of an aircraft once it descends below a certain altitude, increasing the challenge for search and rescue teams. In addition to ADSB tracking, many Alaskan operators use Spider Tracks, a satellite-based tracking system that provides real-time aircraft position updates. Unlike ADSB, which relies on ground stations, Spider Tracks uses the Iridium satellite network, allowing it to provide continuous tracking even in areas with limited radar coverage. This technology has become a critical tool for Alaskan aviation, where aircraft frequently operate in remote regions without reliable radio or radar contact. The significance of this crash goes beyond just one aircraft. It highlights the inherent dangers of flying in Alaska and the ongoing challenges of operating safely in extreme environments. With over 2,000 aviation accidents recorded in Alaska between 2008 and 2022, the region has one of the highest aviation accident rates in the U.S. While many questions remain, having access to the aircraft itself will provide valuable evidence in determining what led to the crash. Icing remains a primary concern given the reported weather conditions and the aircraft's final recorded movements. The TKS anti-icing system, designed to spray a glycol-based fluid over the wings and other critical surfaces to prevent ice buildup, is far more effective than older de-icing boots, which remove ice only after it has already formed. However, its performance depends on having a sufficient fluid supply and proper activation. If the aircraft ran low on TKS fluid, or if ice accumulated faster than the system could handle, aerodynamic performance could have been severely impacted. With the wreckage now recovered, investigators will closely examine the aircraft's de-icing components to determine whether the system functioned as expected and if the aircraft had adequate reserves for the conditions it encountered. Another critical question is whether ice contamination before takeoff played a role in the crash. If frost or freezing precipitation built up on the aircraft while it was on the ground in Unalaklit, it could have negatively affected lift and handling from the start of the flight. Even a thin layer of ice, 
less than the thickness of a grain of sand can disrupt airflow over the wings, increasing stall speed and reducing stability. Pilots are trained to conduct visual and tactile inspections before takeoff, but in harsh Alaskan conditions, ensuring a completely clean airframe can be challenging. Now that the wreckage has been located, investigators will be able to look for signs of pre-existing ice accumulation and determine if it contributed to the aircraft's performance issues. Beyond the anti-icing system, investigators will examine how the aircraft's spoilerons behaved in extreme conditions. Unlike traditional ailerons, spoilerons deploy when the aircraft banks beyond 5 degrees, assisting in roll control by reducing lift on the lower wing. Under normal conditions, this system enhances maneuverability, but in severe icing situations, it could introduce complications. If the autopilot initiated a steep bank while the wings were already affected by ice, the spoilerons could have further disrupted lift, making the aircraft more difficult to control. Investigators will review whether this system played a role in the aircraft's final moments. Another key focus will be the inertial separator, a system designed to protect the PT6A140 turboprop engine from ingesting ice, slush, or debris. This component is manually engaged by the pilot and is essential in freezing conditions to prevent foreign objects from entering the engine. A failure or improper use of this system could have led to engine performance issues, particularly during descent when power adjustments are frequent. Now that the aircraft has been recovered, investigators will be able to inspect the engine components directly to assess whether the separator was used properly and if any mechanical failures occurred. With the wreckage now secured, the biggest challenge in the investigation shifts from searching to analyzing. Having access to the airframe, control surfaces, and engine will allow the NTSB to conduct a detailed forensic examination, identifying any mechanical failures, structural issues, or unexpected aerodynamic factors that may have contributed to the crash. The investigation will also focus on the pilot's actions, aircraft maintenance history, and whether the aircraft performed as expected under the given conditions. This accident also raises broader concerns about single pilot operations in extreme environments. Flying solo in Alaska presents unique challenges. Pilots must navigate unpredictable weather, manage radio communications, load and unload cargo, and monitor aircraft systems all on their own. Without a second pilot in the cockpit, Handling an emergency can be far more difficult, especially in low visibility and challenging conditions. Investigators will likely assess whether workload, decision-making, or pilot fatigue played a role in the flight's outcome. More than anything, this tragedy highlights the harsh realities of flying in Alaska and the critical role of de-icing procedures and aircraft system functionality in such an unforgiving environment. The aviation industry will closely follow the NTSB's findings, and if any safety improvements, whether in equipment design, pilot training, or operational procedures can be made, they could help prevent similar incidents in the future. Now, with the wreckage and victims recovered, the focus shifts to understanding what happened and ensuring safer flights moving forward.